focaccia, pizza, and bread. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make all three by mixing just one dough with the help of some technique from creators, Trevor J. Wilson, Maurizio Leo, and Adam Ragusea. Let's get into it. Okay, grab 100 grams of water, 50 grams of starter, 50 grams of wheat, and 50 grams of white. Give your soon-to-be poolish a mix, then let it ferment at room temperature for about eight to 10 hours or overnight. Once your poolish is ready, pour in 950 grams of water, check to make sure your poolish smells fruity and funky, and pour that alien life form in. Follow that with 1200 grams of all-purpose flour. And after your initial mix, roll up those sleeves because we have arrived at our first creator, Trevor J. Wilson. Over six years ago, I found Trevor using the Rabad method to strengthen his dough. I mentioned it in my last video, but it replicates the action of a double arm dough mixer and strengthens your dough by hand beautifully. After letting the dough hydrate for 30 minutes, weigh out 20 grams of olive oil, 30 grams of salt, and 50 grams of water. Squeeze apart to incorporate, and then mix until the dough reforms itself. Give your dough another 30 minutes to compose itself, and in the same bowl, we're gonna complete our first stretch and fold. Wet your hand and grab deep under the dough, pulling until it resists folding the dough back to the middle of the bowl on top of itself. Complete one full circle and let it rest another 30 minutes. For our last dough strengthening step, we're gonna complete a coil fold. Again, wet your hands and grab from the sides of the dough, pulling towards yourself and then letting the dough fall back on top of itself. If it doesn't look like this, don't worry. Just by pulling the dough, you're giving it strength. Cover with olive oil, wrap it up airtight, and then let it proof in the fridge overnight for at least 12 hours. The next day, pull it from the fridge and it should have at least doubled if not tripled in size. Dust the top of your dough with flour and use your hand to help it release from the bowl. Grab a little bit more flour and give your work surface a nice dusting. Boy, does my wife love when I do that. Grab your bowl, flip it upside down and let your dough fall right out. Since it's time to divide our dough, we're gonna pull it towards us, pull it away from us, and tug it from the sides to even it out. Let's begin by weighing out 200 grams for our pizza dough balls. Repeat and cut the remaining dough in half. This should weigh about 1,000 grams, but if you're over or under, don't panic. Trim off what you need and simply place it back in the center of the dough. Once you fold it, it will become one with the dough. This first piece will be our focaccia. Just fold it to the center from both sides to complete a letter fold. Our final piece of dough will become our bread loaf, and to bring it together, we're gonna grab every available corner and fold it to the middle. Spin the dough around and repeat until there are none. This is a fantastic fundamental technique for beginners. When done, flip it over and tighten your bowl by turning and pulling it towards you with both hands. Then simply repeat with your pizza dough balls. If you'd like to learn more advanced techniques for pizza or bread, let me know in the comments. And if you already have a way that works for you, then great for you. Repeat with that second piece of dough, then grab a pan. Oil it generously with about a quarter cup of olive oil, and then grab your focaccia, placing it seam side down. Feel free to adjust it in the pan, making sure it's as square as possible. Drizzle the top with olive oil, then place on your counter to proof for two hours at room temperature. Re-emerge from your cabinet with the bannetin and towel and two containers for your pizza dough. Set that aside and let's prep our bannetin. I use tea towels, but a kitchen towel is totally fine here. Place it inside, then give it a light dusting with ideally rice flour, which burns less in the oven. Pick up your bowl of bread and tuck it to bed. Not gonna lie, that looks pretty comfy. Your bread dough can last in the fridge up to two days and your pizza dough up to three. Then clean up your work surface and it's time for mise en place, AKA our setup for toppings. And first up is our pizza sauce. Tie together three stalks of basil, then puree the whole peeled tomatoes. This immersion blender is a workhorse for me. In a pot over medium heat, add about two tablespoons of olive oil, garlic, a teaspoon of oregano, and red pepper. Saute for a minute and then pour in your tomato. Add a pinch of salt and simmer on low for one hour and make sure to remove those aromatics. Not everyone cooks their pizza sauce, but a lot of great places do, like Lucali's in Brooklyn. Next, we'll prep a classic topping for focaccia. Grab two sprigs of fresh rosemary and dice. Then, rough chop a half a cup of Kalamata olive. Add to your rosemary and toss with olive oil. I've said it before, but if this isn't your thing, you can put whatever you want in your focaccia. After two hours, your focaccia should have doubled in size and be ready to go. 
Grab those toppings and lay it down evenly across the whole pan. And of course, dimple that focaccia. If you're feeling fancy, add some flaky sea salt, then bake this off at 450 for 20 to 25 minutes. If your house doesn't smell like a Tuscan kitchen, you did something wrong because this thing smells magical. Grab a spatula and pop this out to let it rest on a wire rack so it doesn't get soggy underneath. Let it cool for at least 20 minutes and then take a look at that cross section. It's crunchy, pillowy, and has an addictive taste from the salty brininess of the Kalamata olive. The following day, it's time to bake bread and our second creator, Maurizio Leo. He pours boiling water on lava rocks and towels then places it on the bottom rack underneath the bread you're baking, which helps your bread bloom and create the crust that you really want. Retrieve your loaf from the fridge, and if it's ready, when poked, it should spring back very slowly. On a piece of parchment, turn out your loaf. Wipe away any unnecessary flour, and then choose your weapon to score this thing. I know, I know. I picked the lamest option. To score this loaf, I recommend the crisscross, slightly harder, the square, and if you're feeling ambitious, the circle, which I'll show you after I get rid of my cat Kobe's hair. Meow. Place your lame at a 45 degree angle and score your loaf with the top half of the blade to avoid it getting snagged. Wave a goodbye and welcome it back crispy and golden. It almost makes me sad having to cut into it. It's light as a feather and the crust, well, quiet on set. Because we made a hybrid dough for pizza and focaccia, the crumb structure is going to be less irregular. Imagine Italian bread, perfect for dipping in olive oil and balsamic at your favorite Italian restaurant. It's perfect for sandwiches, in addition with soups, or if you have some funky cheese on hand like I do, even better. Finish your cheese before the dog arrives for a piece, and then clean up because tomorrow we're making pizza. Grab your pizza dough from the fridge and take a look at that low and slow fermentation. Dust your work surface and the top of your dough, then gently create a seam around the edge to preserve the crust. Dimple the middle on both sides and begin pressing out your dough. One way to stretch out your dough is by slapping it back and forth, alternating turning your palms up and down with the slight twist of your hips. Another option is to use your knuckles with one hand crossing under the other to repeatedly turn the dough. And that good old pizza toss, well, it's pretty much just for show. Make sure to dust your peel and let's top this thing. Our final creator is one you may know, Adam Raguzia. Before I spent time working in pizza shops, the cheese on my homemade pizzas never really turned out until I found a video by Adam. For that classic cheese pull, the key was finding low moisture whole milk cheese, not that rubbery part skim stuff. But I digress. On a pizza stone, slide your pizza in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes at 500 and find some inspiration while you wait. Grab your pizza from the oven and be amazed that this, focaccia, and bread all came from the same dough. But don't get too excited because this pizza does need to cool. Goodbye, roof of mouth. Burn my mouth, but. All that's left to do is enjoy the tomato fruits of your labor. Well, that's it. I hope you learned something. Please check out the creators I featured. Their content is amazing. And of course, like and subscribe.